Hello and welcome. My name is Yves Sanford and in this video on VMware vCloud Automation Center 6.0 I'm going to demonstrate how to leverage a VCO workflow um, in combination with a machine blueprint uh, to issue specific stage, uh, steps during the individual stages. First let's log into VCAC and the first thing we need to do is to actually create a VCO endpoint. For that um, we go into the infrastructure tab um, then on endpoints and over here we are going to create the credentials for the VCO um, engine. So again that's just another set of credentials. Click new credentials and um, that way is um, we enter the VCO credentials so give them a name, username and password to look into VCO later on. So this is just a necessary step so that VCAC can talk to VCO. Hit the green check mark. Your credentials are created. Go to the endpoint tab, say new endpoint, orchestrator, vCenter orchestrator. By the way, you need to have at least an advanced license of VCAC for this. The vCloud suite licenses typically don't necessarily work with 6.0 or you need to install 6.0.1 um, for this to work. So enter the address for the VCO system. So that's in our case the VCAC appliance uh, port 8281 slash VCO. We pick the credentials. So we name them VCO. So that's pretty straightforward. And you need to define one property actually in the system so that um, VMware knows uh, or VCAC knows um, which virtual center to use in which priority. Be careful here, the parameter is actually vmware.vcenterorchestrator.policy and the v in vcenterorchestrator priority is actually uppercase, otherwise it will cause issues. We start with priority one, the lowest priority will win. In our case we only have one VCO, so nothing really to worry. So that was all the preliminary steps we needed to do within VCAC. So next we are going to open the vCenter Orchestrator client, log into the Orchestrator client, um, select username and password, hit login, wait for the client to be populated and we are just going to create a, a custom workflow which is pretty straightforward. It should just actually pick the name of the virtual machine and um, save that in a property. I know that's not leading very far but it's, it's just to give you an idea on how to uh, link all that together. So again to build a new workflow go into the de switch the orchestrator client into design mode, um, leverage the folder we created before called cap workflow select new workflow and we are going to call that specific workflow return property that has uh, just the name we are going to create and then in the inputs area we are going to spe specify that we um, get one input parameter in our case we are going to call that input parameter vcacvm because we get the vcac virtual machine in there type is going to be VCAC um, colon virtual machine. These types are pre-built once you have installed the VCAC plugin into, um, into VCO. And now we can go to the schema. So it's again, it's pretty straightforward. Add a scriptable task in here. That's going to be um, the way we are going to populate our parameters. So hit the pencil icon or edit icon on that specific task. Call it, give it a name, so we call it create welcome machine. Go to the in tab and leverage the existing uh, workflow parameter. So VCACVM should be leveraged, just hit select. And then we go to the out so that's actually what the system should finally um, push out. So for that we are going to find that to a specific parameter. We need to search for that now. So that's welcome response. Ah, not to search for it. Create it. Um, sorry for that. Um, it's going to be called welcome response. It's going to be of the type string.
hit OK. And next we are going to go for the um, visual binding, or uh, for the scripting. So in the scripting we are going to first give it a comment, so that's basically uh, what we are going to do. So basically the story here is we are going to return hello plus the machine name. That could be basically everything else. You could also write into different variables and stuff like that. First of all, we are going to generate a log entry. That's always important if you later on need to debug the system or debug the parameters. This way you can ensure that you really know what's going on in your environment and you are not completely blindfolded for that. So just run that command and then also we are going to set the parameter we just defined welcome response equals hello in quotes plus the vcac vm dot virtual machine name. So we see there is a logical issue somewhere in our script. I think I just used the wrong type of bracket here. Let's fix that. And as you can see, the script is now perfectly fine. No error message anymore. So we can close that and move along. The next thing we are going to add is a specific VCAC action element. So add update. Um, property. So we are going to um, add update property from Blueprint or from Virtual Machine Entity. We are going to add, uh, update the Virtual Machine Entity. Drop that into our workflow. Hit the Edit button. Ah, no, hit Setup to actually make sure that we have the proper properties set up. So. Um, in our case, the property name, we are going to predefine that. So the name of the property, how it should be stored in VCAC, we are going to call that prop, uh, VCO response. And we are going to uh, promote that in, in our system. And there are certain parameters we are not going to set. And we set all of those to skip. So that way the system knows that we don't need these specific parameters in our case. So promote them and now we can actually edit the um, workflow process. For that we go to the visual binding and we need to actually now bind the welcome response um, needs to be bound to the property value. This way the system knows how to um, make sure that the property value is stored in the system. Save and close, increase the version with it, and that's basically all we need to do from, um, for our new workflow. Next thing we want to do is um, go through the setup of VCAC in combination with VCO. So based on that, we are going to leverage an existing workflow which comes with a, with a plugin um, from VCO or is pre-installed with the VCAC appliance. So for that, we go to the um, VCAC segment on the library configuration and we are going to call the add a VCAC host workflow. So we run that workflow. We give it a name. So how should our VCAC host be called? What is the parameter, how we connect to it? So it's HTTPS colon VCAC IAS. So it's important that this is linked against the IAS component. And then um, whether you automatically want to install the, pro uh, the um, SSL certificate, the username and password we are going to leverage here. So VCAC admin plus the necessary password. We are going to use shared session. You also need to provide the um, domain. So that's cab.vdc.cd.net in our case. Pretty straightforward. And once you entered all that information, you can basically hit the submit button. And um, based on that, the system then knows how um, to move forward from here. So once we hit the submit button, um, it's going to start the VCO workflow for that, which is going step by step to do all the necessary configurations within VCO. That's pretty straightforward. 
Once the process has a green complete, is on the green complete button, we can look at the logs, see if there is anything specific in the logs we need to look at, but normally that should be not the case. So we can see everything is fine. The next thing we want to do is actually create the necessary stops within VCAC. So therefore we have um, a helper process. And with that helper process, we can pre-prepare certain um, scenarios. So with that, we are going to update um, the VCAC workflow steps. So for that, we pick which host we are going to use. Just select the host, hit select, hit next. Now you can define which steps you want to update. In our case, we only want to deal with the building machine step. But in general, the other ones like disposing, expired, um, provisioned, registered, and all that kind of stuff could also be used. But we just want to have that one specific step. Hit submit. And now the system is going to actually go into the VCAC data model and make all the necessary changes over there. So it's going to read the existing entities, it's going to create customized workflows. So all the stuff in, in the older versions where you needed to leverage the VCAC designer um, to, to build all these necessary components are gone. So we have added to the host, now we have assigned the uh, basic steps. The next is we are going to assign an existing workflow um, to that specific step. So we pick the workflow, building machine. Um, so that's the step workflow which was created. We pick the host. We define which blueprint is going to be leveraged. So in that case, we are going to click the um, value which is going to collect information from VCAC. We, we can see here that the system has perfectly well collected all the individual machines. So we have four, uh, three blueprints here. We are going to pick the center 6.4 small. Only that machine should get that newly, um, uh, newly created workflow attached. Click accept. And you can also change, uh, check if um, that workflow should be applied to existing machines. We don't want to have that. Um, then we pick the workflow. So that's the one we created at the beginning of the video. So that's um, our return property workflow. You can see version 001. And then we hit submit. Again, the system will now um, create all the necessary steps so that whenever a new machine is going to be created, it's going to kick off this specific workflow. And once the VCO workflow for that is, is, is finished, we can basically go back into VCAC. So back within the system, we are going to go directly to the catalog and request the machine. So no more needs to actually set up any specific properties or parameters or anything within the machines. We can directly kick off the request from here. So pick the CentOS 6.4 small machine, which we just picked in the VCO workflow, um, on the new request screen, just hit submit, because we just want to submit that request and um, hit OK on the confirmation. And now we can basically go to the requests pane and uh, watch the machine being created. That should just be a couple of seconds, so that's pretty straightforward. We can see it's currently in progress. Hit the refresh data button. And we will see that it finally is successful. So now the machine is created. We can go to the items tab. And on the items tab, we can actually see that the new machine is created. We can go on actions, view details and check the individual properties. And you will see that there is a new property which has just been added by the system uh, from our VCO workflow. So it should be called vco.response. That's what we will call the parameter. And there you can see it, vco.response. And the value is hello space machine name. 
Thanks for watching this video. As you can see, it's far more easier with VCAC 6.0 to integrate with VCO workflows now. Um, this was just the demonstration of a basic use case, but basically you don't need the VCAC designer at all anymore. You can basically build everything and run everything from a VCO workflow, attach it back to VCAC and uh, do all the linkage, parameter setting, properties and all that kind of stuff from VCO. That's really going to be very helpful for a lot of users because it saves a lot of time. Thanks for watching. This was VMware VCAC 6.0. Uh, machine Blueprint uh, Management with VCO. My name is Eve Sanford, CEO of the Comdivision Group. Follow me on Twitter at Eve Sanford or drop me an email at y.sanford at comdivision.com. Thank you and keep watching.